I think you can see that. It says uh, 1618, which is uh, 418 for all the non-military folks out there. It's the 17th of April. And I'm at this little tiny trucks, uh, I should say gas station, it's not a truck stop. They do have fueling for trucks, and they do have a tiny bit of parking here. And um, I have a load that was not scheduled to deliver until tomorrow. And I'm about 45 uh, minutes away. It's only 418. So it's sometimes I get these loads where they try to, I think, schedule this based on uh, known shippers and receivers and possible delays. And they try not to um, schedule uh, uh, delivery times too short for the driver to make it to actually make it to their delivery on time. So I was, and I think the place I'm delivering delivers by appointment only. And uh, I was scheduled for 9.15 a.m. tomorrow. And that happens. I, you know, I, I don't have anything against it. That You know, it's just part of trucking. Because uh, I, you know, I, I do fine otherwise. It's just every once in a while you get these loads. So uh, I took the opportunity, since it's so early in the day, uh, at around 2.30, because I've been parked here for an hour, uh, around uh, 2.30 I did a stop check my load and I'll show that here in a second and uh, I decided well let me send in a message because sometimes I can see if they are able to uh, move up the appointment either earlier tomorrow morning or maybe even today it doesn't hurt to ask you know they'll check and, and they'll either say oh yeah you can get in if you show up at such and such a time uh, they can get you unloaded or they'll say no I'm sorry they don't have any other appointment times that's all we can do that's the best we can do and I'm happy with that. I've got movies to watch. <laughs> I don't care. I'm just checking. Because this by doing nothing, I run the chance of earning less money. So because I did that, uh, my fleet manager checked with the people that he needed to, who made some phone calls and said, hey, you know what? They can get you in tonight at uh, 6.30. I'm like, well, that's great because it's heading closer to Fort Smith. And as soon as I am unloaded, I'm pretty sure I'll be going to Fort Smith and picking up some steel bars. So I will get uh, more miles in and a potentially uh, higher miles this week. So I guess the point is, is it doesn't hurt to ask uh, uh, because all they could do is say no. If I do ask and it comes out positive, then it just helps my pocketbook. So I sit here and wait. I'll probably be waiting another uh, 30 minutes. Uh, because I don't want to get there too soon uh, because they do not have parking I've been to this place before it's very limited space for trucks and uh, I want to make sure that uh, when I get there I can untarp um, unsecure most of the stuff and then back into where they have me unload because this is one of those really tight places that you get into and then you back in and they unload you and then you pull out Excuse me. I know you didn't hear that, but that was rude of me. So I've, I've kind of got this oblong load of steel. And it's, it's, these are all steel coils. There's six of them. And uh, unfortunately, it's tarped right now, so you can't really see it. But, you know, I've got six coils, seven chains, because this uh, center coil is 10,000 pounds, so it needs uh, more than just one 8,000 pound worth of securement. So I had to throw two chains on there. Then I've got a strap on the front, a strap on the back. Um, is a like a trip chain or a trip strap. And um, but uh, some may say, well, why did you do it this way? Well, let me here, let me back up, and I'll do it while not looking behind me. So this may be considered unsafe. So if I fall and hurt myself, I'll probably get in trouble. <laughs> um, you can see the uh, back of the tarp kind of um, not covering the whole load, but that's okay. And I'll show you is because underneath that one tarp is a second tarp. So it is covered uh, to make sure 
but um, I just give you all angles here. There's nothing else to talk about. So I put. I, whenever I have to use two tarps, I, you know, you always tarp from the back forward, and then from the forward back. In this way, any uncovered spots are covered up based on the way the wind works. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the details. Um, I also, based on the way this was going to be loaded, uh, usually it's they're all the same height. Uh, this just happens to be a load where one coil is a uh, different dimensions than all the rest. Not a big deal. Just changes the way you kind of have to do things. Um, the peak on the front coils, that's uh, one of my timbers that goes across the top that helps it form an angled roof. So if it were to rain, which it's not going, it hasn't, you know, this is about as cloudy as it's been all day and uh, I wouldn't suspect it would be raining at all. It may rain tonight, I don't know. After all, I am scheduled to not deliver until tomorrow, but that's changed. Uh, but I put that on there, sheds water if needed. It didn't, I didn't have one for the back, but it's not really necessary because the slope from the tall coil itself, there's only two in the back, three in the front, and it provides enough of a slope the way it is to where I, I didn't have to do that. And uh, it's uh, 44,500 pounds worth of steel. These are painted steel coils. And uh, it's going to a place that uh, utilizes this product to make stuff. Uh, as opposed to most coils which are loaded um, on their side, most coils are transported on their side. These are actually on um, pallets or skidded, um, so they load them up there and they're, they're eye to the sky or the center hole of the coil is pointed towards the sky. So a little bit different securing method but it gets it done. Some would consider this safer because there's really no rolling involved this uh, of the coil forward to back or to the side. It would really be more of a condition where these either slide or tip over if there was some kind of issue but that's uh, my load for today what's today Tuesday um, things have gone by really quick today because I dropped off this morning at Granite City picked up this load and then headed out and I started my week on on, when did I start my week? Sunday. By the end of Monday, it had almost, a, I already had a thousand miles in. So, when you can uh, start off your week and have, you know, basically $500 in your pocket, two days of work, I like that. Um, and, uh, anyway, just telling you what's going on. Uh, showing a little bit of uh, the load that I've got and also that there are spaces this is highway H in front of me that tr goes between 44 in Missouri into Arkansas and in fact I'm like two miles from the Arkansas border and this will connect me over to let's see what's the road I don't remember it's a highway that runs north and south but uh, anyway that's it. Uh, you can give this some kind of thumbs up if you want. You don't have to. That's the great thing about this country and our world is you have free agency. So if you found yourself reaching this point in the video wondering why you're watching it, I'd say you've got problems. <laughs> I never watch videos that I'm like not interested in. After the first 30 seconds, I'm not interested in it. I go to something else. But apparently there are people that, that watch these videos that I make and then complain at the end that they watch the whole thing. <laughs> That's some serious issues. You might want to go see somebody about that. I'm just saying. I'm not a professional, but you may have a problem. <laughs>